Mm. Oh, you're the one. I'm the Paul one. Paul Schmidt. We've been talking about it and like I'd basically talk to people and sort of say, look, I'm going to get some if you want to do it. Like I'm going to have some, just let me know. And then I had some and everyone who f- expressed interest kind of shit their pants a little bit. And that's fair enough because it's quite a big thing to do. And I, I forgot I'd had it in my bag and I got in the dressing room and I saw Paul and I was like, oh, you wanted to try this, didn't you? And he was like, yeah. And I was like, when do you want to do it? And he goes, tonight. And I went, yeah. And that was that. And so, yeah, we went back to his. And he's told the story, I think, hasn't yeah. he? And it's 100% as he told it. It was the oddest thing. It was great. But he's got more into it now. And he hooked me up with this guy uh, who sells DMT vape pens. Cause, cause Not the shaman. No, not the shaman. This is this is another dude. DMT vape pens. So basically, DMT. Welcome to the future. If you wanna, if you if you wanna sort of um, do the crystals, it's, it's quite intense, but it's a bit rough. You have to like kind of make a homemade bong. The, the vape pens are a lot easier. Homemade bomb. Bong. Bong. Yeah, you need to make a homemade DMT bong. <laughs> bomb. <laughs> Set it off, light it. Yeah, you need to make a sacrifice of a load of innocent strangers <laughs> before you can smoke it. So you... No. <laughs> okay, bomb. Imagine if you set a DMT bomb. bomb off in like a Marks and Spencer's. <laughs> oh, cloud, Jesus. But like, yeah, I. so he hooked me up with this dude who sells DMT vape pens. And um, I said, oh yeah, like when can I get one? And he said, now, in half an hour. And I was like fully dressed as Troy Hawk. And I had like half an hour before, <laughs> I had like smoking jacket, cravat, moustache, and I'm like, please tell me you did the drug deal in his voice oh, as well. I, well, this, 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 this the th- so I, I was like, right, I got half an hour, whatever, I can do this. I need to go find a cash point, and it's going to come by in a car, and then that's all good. So I got out of hot water, and as soon as I got out of hot water, this, this, I had this voice go, oh, you look very smart. I turn around and it was Pete Price. <laughs> so I'm going out to do Pete Price. Pete you Price, a, a DMT vape pen. No, Pete. <laughs> Pete Price just happened to fucking be there the second I literally like he was waiting for me, standing right, at the top okay. of the steps by hot water. Oh yeah, look, and I turn around, it was Pete Price, and and I went, uh, oh hello Pete. <laughs> right, and he went, all right lad. I was like, can I get a picture? And he goes. Yeah, go on then. And I, I'm like hugging the picture there. And then like fucking, I I suddenly remember, like I'd prank called him 15 years ago and, and, and really made his life a misery. And he had no idea who I was or anything. It was just so weird. I literally- Oh, because you were doing a different voice? I, yeah, I was doing a different voice. Yeah, I literally, I'd name checked him <laughs> at the set I'd just done. Yeah, I'd well, referenced him at the set I'd just done, come out and there he was. It was so fucking bizarre. And then I got in this car with this dude dressed as Troy, half did the voice, half didn't. Went, got the money, did the deal, came back. And, and that was it, the fucking mental- I bet drug minutes. dealers love a guy in full costume, getting in the car to do a Lars drug deal. A, what haven't they seen? It's like, whatever. Oh, yeah, of course of course he's wearing a kimono. And a... No, no, no. No, 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 no that was wasn't pretty blasé. Bullshit along. That, that was not his thought. You did not get in dressed as Troy Oak with a fucking muzzy. No, I did. Painted on your fucking leg. Right, what did he and think? And he was like, all right, lads, exactly what I expected. What did he think? How many though? vape pens do you want? Why didn't he, why didn't he bring it up? Because he's probably fucking terrified that you were a knack. <laughs> <laughs> you imagine the me in the place? Hello, two drugs, please. How <laughs> undercover are we going? Let's get a guy who looks so wacky, no one's going to think he's a fucking knack. Can you? That wouldn't be a bad idea, actually, would it? Because you wouldn't think you wouldn't think someone dressed like Troy a would be a knack. <laughs> I thought you were going to dress as a knack. Dress as a police officer. And no, one <laughs> no one the would think. No one would think. A police officer is a police officer. You wouldn't think if you were in fancy dress, you wouldn't you wouldn't go. Oh, that guy's undercover. You'd, yeah, but when you're dressed as Troy, can we put a picture in for everyone? Can we drop a picture right of- now? Like when you're dressed like that, mm. it's it's over the top, but it's not so wacky. That it couldn't be real. That it's, yeah, the, the, yeah, there's still like a yeah. My girlfriend thought you were real until she met you in real life. Yeah, she'd seen your videos. It's a weird balance. Like talking to people after shows, I kind of keep it up, but I'm sort of. <laughs> what's that? What's that? Red flag. <laughs> right. right. Can you yeah. just right? So for me, uh-huh. I don't think I'll ever do DMT. Yeah, because I'm scared of it. I right. got some now. If you want, nope. All good. All right. uh, certainly not. Before right. I go and do Alexander's You've got your vape pen. Nice. You got your yeah. vape pen yeah. 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 So last section would be a bit weird. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. in a sentence or two, yeah. can you sell DMT to me and the people out there? 
Um, I don't know. Right, here's here's. It. How I, would you sell it if you were trying to sell it? I wouldn't try and sell it. That's yeah, the but thing. yeah, but if you were, okay, I so know you wouldn't. Here's how I would I would bring describe it. it. Okay, so what happens is I would bring it up, and then you can tell when you bring it up, people become interested. and You talk to them. About, all right, how's the best way to describe? It? Okay, here's what happened to me. Like, so I had it the first time, and it was like this wonderful feeling of. Uh, insignificance, like this this feeling that you're absolutely tiny and you don't matter, but at the same time, you're also a tiny part of everything. And it, 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 it takes the pressure off immediately of all the little silly, little pointless worries. It sort of holds up a mirror up to everything that you worry about on a daily basis in the perspective of just what the bigger picture or goal is. And it just goes, you fucking idiot. Like, like, look at this stuff. This really, you're getting worried about all this stuff and you're ignoring all of this. And it's like an instant blast of that that, that burrows into your brain and sits there and kind of like almost gets hardwired in. So you kind of come out with a, a fresh, more healthy sort of mindful perspective. Do you know what I mean? And that lasts for a couple of weeks and then you go back to being a knobhead again. <laughs> That's how I experienced it. And you're worried that you'd like cocaine too much? <laughs> <laughs> totally different. You can't, honestly, it's, it's a weird thing. Like, here's the thing, right? If you've got a shed full of stuff locked in your head that you keep locked, that you never want to open up and pull out and examine, right? Don't ever do DMT. But if you want to go through some sort of like potential landmines you've got lurking in there that might fuck you up later in life and you want to sort of throw yourself on them now, then DMT would be a good thing to do. So it's how much you're prepared to sort of like confront things in your own brain that you'd normally hide away from. Do you have to top up then? Like every four, you say four weeks. Do you, nah, mic- you micro dose or do you just do it? No, uh, you I, like when I've done it, I t- just sort of try and blast off as hard as possible and I'll do it and I won't <laughs> need to do it as... <laughs> you sounded you sounded all the reasons for doing it were really sensible and considered. Uh, <laughs> almost <laughs> philosophical. Blast off. Well, yeah. How do I do it? I got off me fucking tits. Yeah. Like, no, you, you literally blast off because you go somewhere else. You lose right. sight of who you are. You lose touch with your ego. You lose touch with everything. You fly off into this other realm. And it's just brilliantly refreshing. It's opened up my mind. And uh, uh, it's it's made me, I think, a lot a lot happier, I think, a lot less stressed. And I don't do it loads. And it's it's weird. I did do – I've only had one bad trip in all the times I've ever done it. And that was because I'd hammered it like three times that night. You know what I mean? So you – what, just you don't do it that often. No, like just one, often once every to get a vape once pen. every three months, once every six months. Well, how often are you going to do that vape pen? I've not done it. I probably won't do it for like a week or two. What often on a bad trip? So, um, so here's what happened. I'd done it twice, <laughs> and you set intent. It's going to sound very hippie. I don't know how open to this stuff you are, but you set intentions at the beginning. So you go right. What do you want out of this trip? So I was like, I want knowledge. And I was like, Fucking, and I took a shitload. And you deal with this thing that essentially treats you like a little child. Not in a not in a sort of um, a nasty way, just in a whatever entity you're dealing with is so much further ahead and advanced than you are. It's like you're a little toddler. It's a bit it's dismissive, but not unkind to dismissive. But I'd come back for the third time and it showed me all these lovely pictures, giving me these lovely trips, and I was fucking back. And so whatever this thing was, he went, Right, right, you little knobhead. Right, you want knowledge, dear. Okay. And then I sort of felt myself go, No, 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 no. I actually I've changed my mind. And then it's like Fucking too late, right? It was dragging me through this kaleidoscope of the world ending. So it was like three pictures of a bridge like collapsing or a mountain going down or a motorway caving in. And I'd go into one and it split into three. And the whole time it was like, I knew it was the world ending. And Are you it sure just, you just went on the M6 at Rush this Hour? Voice, oh, right? <laughs> this voice was going, this is all your fault. This is all your fault. This is all your fault. And then it threw me into... Uh, like a toddler version of whatever it was, and I was being dragged around a bedroom, and then it just fucking spat me back. Like sometimes, do you believe you, this is you, when you're talking about something else? Do you yeah. think it's something else? You don't think it's your mind, dude? Like there are so many different ways of looking at it. When you're in and you're under, it feels like you are interacting with something that could not possibly be a part of your DNA or consciousness. However, when you come back and you rationalize it and you think about it. There is a chance that um, potentially you're accessing some like part of your brain that's got collective DNA that's gone through the generations. So, you know, there's like an access store through your ancestors that carries through and it sort of gets bigger and bigger through the generations. And it's like maybe this is unlocking some little tiny peanut little thing in your 
whatever the part of the brain is. And it's just opening that up to all this like- That makes me want to try it. That yeah, that last cool description made me want to try This it. is pure guesswork on my part. Like, Because it's all, I would assume it's all within you, obviously, but that's not how it feels when you're in that moment. I, 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 I've I never never been spiritual or anything like that, but, but when I did it, and then after the first time I did it, I was like, fuck knows, man, all bets are off now. I wonder if a deeply religious person, I wonder what they'd come out of it. If you were a devout Muslim, if you were a really <laughs> hardcore Christian, <laughs> like what would that unlock? <laughs> If they'd come out of it going, oh my God, it's all bullshit. Let's get the head of ISIS on DMT. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Do you know what? what? If you put happens, the world leaders Jeff on ISIS. DMT, I'm, I'm, you know, mushrooms, psilocybin, all that kind of thing. I don't know. It just gives you a perspective. It just fucking... Yeah, weird, weird G7 summit, that, wouldn't it? Yeah, it'd be amazing. <laughs> Where all the, hey, this is enough's enough. Yeah. I can't believe it's they're not, extending the lockdown. Look at these licking each other. It's not addictive. It's not physiologically addictive, but it will, it will, it will potentially challenge you mentally. Do you know what I mean? Like, it will make you look at things that maybe you don't want to look at in your head, but for a greater good of getting them sorted out. I feel like you're describing some elements of this podcast. Sometimes <laughs> sometimes Adam and I make jokes about things in our life that we don't Fucking really hell. want to make jokes about, but it's for the greater good of the Patreon. We've, like, gone, we've gone from pegging to existential interdimensionality. I feel like if I do DMT, there's just going to be a big snake that looks me dead in the eye and goes, open your fucking mail, dickhead. <laughs> <laughs> Has, has Paul Smith? <laughs> Those brown lessons been sat there for three weeks, you daft swat. <laughs> <laughs> has Paul managed to talk you guys into it? Because I know oh, he's like, no. not at all. No, because we do this twice a week. When am I, like that two weeks of serenity that you described yeah, yeah. would make for some of the shittest have a word yeah, ever. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, hey, yeah. we've got an email in here from fucking Terry. And I'm like, do you know what? In the big picture, it doesn't really matter. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you need to just step out of your side, Terry. Just take a moment and just interdimensionality, yeah. you know? Think about that. Yeah. No, that is You're it. rat. It'd be, a good, it'd be a good special though. The lads the do DMT. DMT special. Order. The DMT. Oh. <laughs> can I? Can I, I am. Is it illegal? Can I do it with you guys? Is it? Is it illegal? Oh, well, yeah, if it's we illegal, if yeah. we pretended to do it, but the thing is, though, you, you, you can record yourself doing drugs and just say it was fee. Yeah. Yeah, you can. As, as long, long as, as this doesn't, doesn't go out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Doesn't say that. Yeah. Um, Barry I, Dodds to shame and Kev. Looking forward to that one, Milo. We'd see, we'd see more spirits than Barry Dodds would. I fucking guarantee that, <laughs> Milo. What? If we did it as a Patreon special, would I? Would you be our guy? Hundred thousand percent. Oh, now I'm in. Now yeah. I'm in because we'd I can have to monetize it. As well. yeah. <laughs> How about you do it and no, I'll just watch? I, I what are you going to do? Have a fucking gin and tonic? <laughs> yeah. All right. Sponsored G by G Givens Gin. Genuinely, right? Genuinely, oh, would you try would, it? Probably, yeah. What would you be afraid of? Ben, like, you've genuinely. got to. <laughs> You're a musician. I just, I just don't want thing to is do though, it. I've, I've never touched drugs at all, so what would my, like, what would my response to it be? Um, you have to have some I crack got, first no to idea. warm up. No, I'm not saying you know what I'm saying. Blake. Before I before I did um, DMT, I'd never done any drugs apart from the odd bit of weed. Right. Okay. Yeah. I've hardly done any hallucinogenic, so I don't think my tolerance would be loads higher just because I yeah. was a fucking whiz kid back in the day. Yeah. Finn, you'd have to do it because you're a Beatles fan. Right, oh, well, Finn's be, in. absolutely fine. So Adam's going to have a, a weird one. That. <laughs> I had a bad trip on LSD, though. But you know, the thing with DMT, like five minutes after you've done it, you could drive a car, you could do a gig, like it's gone from your system completely. You're, right. you're, you're back in the Even room. if you haven't got a license. Your, your brain <laughs> produces your it, mind. doesn't it, when yeah. you die? Exactly right. Yeah. And some people think when you have religious v visions, it's just your brain being swarmed with the natural levels of, because DMT is actually in everything anywhere. When you smoke it, you smoke an uh, a non-inhibitor or something that, that basically stops the inhibitor working. So the DMT floods your brain. I think it would Thank be you. kind of good if Adam didn't do it as well. And like, just, he's got more of a career to worry about. But also, just to have someone being like, what a fucking bunch of dickheads. But but you wouldn't want that in the room. Because, like, when you're in the room, it's got to be really calm. We do everything peaceful. together. Oh, calm and peaceful. Like, this, he's my rock. It, <laughs> it, it'd have to, you'd have to get the right conditions. Captain Tranquility. Oh, he's fine, yeah. It'd be ace. Yeah. As, yeah. Long, yeah. as long as he could do that, like... Oh yeah, he's well known for it. Without, I think I'd be clouded knowing he was in the room, though. Yeah, I'd be going into it like a cloud of anxiety, right. knowing that Adam could do something. Here's the way I tell I you what, it wouldn't be boring. I don't no. think. Here's the way I look at it, right? If we'd set it up and everything, and then if one thing happened that got in the way of the thing, I'd be like, right, that's the universe saying, "Fucking, do not do it." 
Do you know what I mean? I mean as hippie as that. As right. I don't know whether doing Class A drugs is uh, part of Patreon's terms and conditions. <laughs> it's not a Class or A, is it? I, I, I think so, yeah. Oh, sorry. I thought, it was, like a, I thought it was but like we would, a... We would be a doing one. it. Herbal. Not be. a real one. It's not like fucking calms or soothers. Mm. No, I thought... I didn't think it was a, a Class A. I think it is. Oh, well, we I could ret- just take a soother. I could cut it. And it looked like we just fucked off soothers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You know, we're talking about um, age restrictions on an episode. Do you reckon this might fuck with it a little bit at the end? (laughs)